and now for something completely different. What you can see here on the screen is electrode impedance from an EEG cap that I am wearing on my head. Uh, the electrodes of the EEG or electroencephalogram will be able to register my actual brain waves and uh, tell the computer about the activity that is going on, which again allows the computer to analyze it and, uh, well, put conclusions, if you want to put it that way. So uh, you can see the impedance changing on multiple electrodes, and that's because the guy behind me is just putting, uh, conducting gel electrode gel into these little electrodes. That stuff takes a long, long time. But finally, when everything is set up, it's pretty cool and you can see the actual brain waves on the monitor. What you can see there is interference from blinking. <laughs> That's what just blinking does. And moving my eyes a lot and you can see how that is interfering with the actual EEG readings as the muscle activity produces much greater uh, electric signals than the actual brain waves. Now we're zooming in and you can see something fascinating. This is beta activity. And you see these larger spikes there, which are more apart. That is actual alpha activity from the occipital lobe because I was closing my eyes for a second. And you can see the computer notices it immediately. Let's look at it again. Here you can see the beta activity of an active mind because I'm actively visualizing the stuff on screen. There you can see the alpha activity coming up, these slower and of greater amplitude waves. And then I will be opening my eyes again, and you can see the beta activity immediately starts again. And the screen will be overwritten again from the left to the right, proceeding with great beta activity. As I'm actually staring at the screen and analyzing my own brain waves while seeing what my brain does while I look at my brain waves. So, that was some pretty cool stuff, but it gets even better. Each of these lines there represents a single electrode that uh, records a reading of a very specific area of the brain. And what you can actually do with this is produce a brain map. So, uh, you have an overview of the activity going on as distributed over the whole brain. So uh, when I was actually focusing on something that I was supposed to focus on, I'll talk more about that later, you can see in the above bit, um, in the above brain map, that is the middle bit of the image, that there was a large red area of increased activity uh, coming up when I was actually seeing something that I wanted to see and focused on it, as opposed to uh, what you can see on the bottom, just below it, where there would be no such increase in, in activity, or just random overall activity, but not this absolutely major huge increase upon seeing something that I absolutely want, because that was uh, the actual task of this, so let's look at this uh, a little more. Here's another image where you can see uh, very high activity in the parietal lobe, in the uh, back lobe of the brain basically, and uh, that is associated with uh, visual processing as well as spatial processing, because um, the center for the eyes, the visual center is actually in the very back of your head, and uh, just a little more to the front of that is the parietal lobe that plays a great role in uh, processing visual spatial information such as uh, your orientation in the room and whatever kind of stuff. Now, what can actually be done with this? Once calibrated, you can actually uh, spell things, for example, by just thinking of them. You can see here uh, that there are different letters, uh, that also represented by different shapes. And whenever I see the letter that is used in my word, or is actually the next spot in my word, I go like, I want this, I want this, I really want it. And otherwise I'm going like, oh, lame, oh, I don't care, uh, whatever, I'm not concentrating on anything blah blah whatever and then the letter comes up again and I go like I need this oh I totally want this but I don't move anything I just think this I'm just getting totally or trying to get totally excited about this letter well otherwise I'm completely shutting my brain down and as you can see this happens in a very very quick time so first of all uh, as you saw before you have to choose uh, one category of uh, letters and then that category of letters will be uh, narrowed down to just a few letters where you can actually pick the, the letter, the actual letter. This will be, uh, or this is much easier than seeing the whole alphabet one after another, of course, and much quicker and much better. So, as you can see, I picked a B. And 
and we're continuing. You can see I'm not moving anything at all. So I have to, to pick uh, something that contains my letter, one of those groups. And once the computer is sure that I made a decision on a specific thing by noticing an increased activity multiple times for, for that specific uh, symbol, you can see it proceeds to narrow down to just a few letters again. And once again, once the computer is sure that I'm focusing on a very specific thing, it will choose the letter. And there I'm spelling R, B, R so far. Let's speed this up a little and see what else I'm choosing. So, uh, here you can actually see again, I'm not moving at all. I'm just looking at the middle of the screen. That's also what you can see these infrared sensors for on the bottom of the monitor there. They're actually eye trackers. So, uh, uh, if you move your eyes, uh, you will get a warning sound and the thing will be cancelled. So, you always have to look at right the middle bit, the middle portion of the monitor. And as you can see here, I am spelling brain. Let's see if I can get the N. Yep, here we go. I just spelled brain. There are different approaches to this. For example, this is a more uh, visual spatial kind of spelling, I suppose, because the letters are actually in different parts of the screen. They're not all coming up in the middle of the screen, but uh, they will be, yeah, as you can see, uh, top left, bottom left or something, but still encoded with colors as well. And uh, yeah, you can see how that works here. And uh, it seems like uh, the, the ease to spell words like that is different for different people. So they were actually trying to find out how this works at the Brain Computer Interface Lab of the TU, the Technical University of Berlin, where this was done. So here I'm actually spelling hello for now. And it works quite well, but uh, later on you will see that I'm also making a mistake. But it's possible to correct your mistake by exactly this thing here. There's a Z and there's also like a backspace letter there, so you can correct your words. Of course this, this stuff takes long, but imagine uh, you had a stroke in your brainstem and you're completely paralyzed. You can maybe only move your eyes, maybe not even your eyes. So what do you do? How do you communicate with the world? And well, that's the future of brain-computer interface. Along with, of course, uh, some nice games and stuff. I mean, there's, there's pretty fancy stuff that can be done with this, including uh, concentration training for people with ADHD, for example, because you exactly know what you're doing. You get feedback on what you're doing immediately. It's not like uh, like with, uh, I don't know, let's say reading a book, where you only later notice that you were not concentrated. Here, you immediately notice, because I was spelling hell no instead of hello for hello world, which was a thing that I was supposed to spell. So you can see this is not as easy as it might seem to you. But it's great fun anyway. And also um, I will be taking part in more radioactive experiments as a nuclear lab rat soon, if everything goes well, in probably about a month. And I hope I will be able to report on this as well. Not sure, because as I said, it's scientific research, so nobody knows if I will be able to take a camera in there, but I should be radioactive again, and I should be able to get a nice new isotope from my urine, so stay tuned for this. Goodbye.